Hi, Max. They're great. Hello, wingman. This is Tally Mouse. Normally, I try to steer clear of opinion pieces with extreme angry or starstruck emojis in the sort, and stay as objective and fact-based as reasonably possible, presenting information based upon what I have personally observed, but also trying to be reasonable with expectations about how much tinkering I would anticipate to get a cutting-edge technology to work well for me. Not everything can be an iPhone. But even iPhones don't escape technical or user issues, as witnessed by the long line at the Genius Bar in any Apple store. That said, it'll soon be six months that I've owned and been testing the Pimax Crystal, and I wanted to spend a little time going over how the experience has been, along with what has been introduced, what has changed, and what has improved, and the overall evolution of the product. Over that time, I've had a lot of fun flying in the Pimax Crystal, as you will have seen from my previous videos, the graphical and image clarity and quality alone has changed the way that I fly. No longer am I having to lean forwards to read dials, gauges and MFDs, and I've also stopped moving my head as much, as I can now simply move my eyes and a highly supersampled crisp image follows my gaze. I've had no real technical issues to speak of, other than obvious user error and some of those were anticipated anyway as were also part of the software and firmware beta testing groups in addition to being a tester for both Lighthouse faceplate and the big FOV lenses. So let's take a look at what features the Crystal initially shipped with compared to what is now available and operational due to a rapid succession of software and firmware updates. When the Crystal first shipped it didn't have the standalone mode enabled nor eye tracking, nor auto IPD, and had no lighthouse functionality, even though the inside out tracking was working generally very well. This was something of an own goal for Pimax, as these missing features, that were initially advertised as ready to go, became somewhat of a bone of contention with those few YouTubers who were sent early review models and consequently slammed the crystal for not delivering on all of its promises. As any stone dropped into a pond would do, the ripples from these early reviews bouncing constructively interfered, amplified and were parroted all over the interwebs, with many people forming strong opinions about the crystal without ever having laid their hands on one. That aside, now that we're in November, every base feature advertised for the crystal is now functioning and available. The 42 PPD lenses have just started to ship and the big FOV lenses are just around the corner and those promised to bring the FOV in line with the larger than average FOV that Pimax originally marketed for the Crystal. Overall the software and firmware system work very well, there are a few outstanding minor bugs, but Pimax has been working diligently to listen to customer feedback and implement features and fixes, such as the 72Hz refresh mode. The optional accessories of fully wireless PC VR and a mixed reality pass-through faceplate are still a work in progress, but these were never part of the base system anyway. The first Pimax product that I owned was the 8K Plus with this giant FOV, but only had 2K per eye telemetry, so upscale to 4K was performed within the HMD. I then moved on to the 8KX, and that had native 4K per eye, and the image quality difference was immediate and noticeable. I would say that the image quality improvement from the 8KX to the Crystal felt exponential in comparison to going from the 8K Plus to the 8KX. The time between the original launch and now has also given third-party software developers the opportunity to improve their eye tracking and hand tracking functionality, so that this functionality within DCS and Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, have both been dramatically improved. One thing is for sure, I don't think I'd ever buy another headset that didn't have eye tracking built in. The performance and quality improvements alone mean that I would struggle to go back to anything without it. If we were to look at all of the consumer grade headsets currently available that have eye tracking, we'd see that we'd have the Quest Pro, the Aero and the Crystal. I've added the VR1 in here, but note that it's not available yet, and nobody outside of Somnium has actually seen a real unit being demonstrated in the wild, other than pixelated heads apparently wearing them on YouTube videos.
Both the Pro and the Aero are over two years old now, and if you were to read through the subreddits for each, you'd find that they are not without their occasional issues either. Not that Pimax's support team has been ahead of the power curve recently, but they are continually and rapidly evolving and trying to improve. The resolution of the Quest Pro lets it down, and the pancake lenses are not ideal. The Aero is a very solid headset with great visuals, but the poor vertical FOD lets it down somewhat, forcing you to move your head to look down at the cockpit more than would normally be necessary. And the base station only operation means that you realistically need to factor in an additional $400 to the $990 price tag. Aero had originally promised local dimming, but it was never delivered, so the colours look slightly more washed out than that of the Pro or the Crystal. And then we come to the VR1. It boasts, on paper, almost identical specifications to the Pimax Crystal with the big FOV lenses. And if you've been following Somnium's Discord server, you'll also have seen that almost everything, including the head strap, will be classed as an optional accessory in addition to the base price, which is said to be at least €1,500. Euro. Which begs the question, what exactly is the point of the VR1? Don't get me wrong, I have my name on that reservation list too, because I am always in pursuit of the best VR experience currently available, but I wonder what their purpose will be other than a clone product that appears to be more expensive than its closest competition. To conclude, if I was going to purchase again today, Based off the knowledge and experience I now have, I would go for the Crystal again, with the Aero as a close second. The difference is, however, that the Crystal can be traded in for the future Pimax 12K to provide a handsome discount. Unlike the VR1, the Crystal actually exists. You can own it right now. Don Draper can say this better than I ever could. This thing, gentlemen. What price would we pay? What behavior would we forgive? If they weren't pretty, if they weren't temperamental, if they were beyond our reach and a little out of our control, would we love them like we do? The crystal. At last, something beautiful you can truly own. Until next time, wingman.